For possibly the first time in his life, Darth Maul had been taken completely by surprise. He had felt no warning vibration of the Force before being hit by the blaster bolts. The astonishment this caused him was almost equaled by the shock of realizing that the attack had come from Lorne Pavan. He had been so certain of the Corellian's death back on Coruscant that awakening to see him alive and looting his utility belt had caused Maul to momentarily question his own sanity. Lorne turned and started pulling himself frantically along the corridor he was in. He didn't know where he was going or how he was going to escape the vengeance of the monster behind him. There was no room in his head for anything, not even the pain of his severed wrist as the shock began to wear off, except raw red panic. And then he shouldered his way through one final access port and found himself in a large solarium. As he passed through the entry, Lorne felt weightfulness return with a rush. He looked around. Plants and dwarf trees were tastefully arranged in a small garden setting. Half of the dome ceiling was made of polarized transparisteel, affording a magnificent view of the stars and a huge crescent of the planet. And standing in the garden were several people of various species, some of whom were wearing the robes of Republic Senate members, and others dressed in the dark, form-fitting attire of Coruscant guards. He recognized one of the senators. When he had worked for the Jedi, Lorne had heard him spoken of many times, always as a man of clear-minded practicality, a stranger to corruption and intrigue. If anyone could be counted on to protect the information on the holocron and see it safely reach the sanctuary of the Jedi Temple, it would be him. Lorne staggered forward. One of the senators, a Gran, saw him coming and reacted with a bleat of fright. Several of the guards moved in to protect their charges, drawing blasters. Wait! The command came from the senator whom Lorne had recognized. He stepped forward, his expression one of concern. What's the matter, my good fellow? What brings you here in this extreme state? Lorne pulled the crystal from his pocket and held it out. He saw the other's eyes narrow as he recognized it. A holocron crystal? Yes, Lorne gasped, dropping it into the senator's outstretched hand. It must reach the Jedi. Very important. The senator nodded and quickly tucked the holocron away in a fold of his robe. Then he noticed the stump where Lorne's other hand had been. You're injured. He turned to one of the guards, summoning him with a quick, imperious gesture. This man requires hospitalization immediately, and protection from assassins as well, by the look of it. Lorne sagged into a chair. As the others came forward, he risked a glance over his shoulder at the service port where he had entered. There was no sign of the Sith. Relief flooded over him. The nightmare was over at last. He felt his consciousness starting to slip away and realized that for the first time in days he could allow himself the luxury of exhaustion. Make sure the holocron, he mumbled, but was too tired to finish the sentence. His benefactor leaned over him and smiled. Don't worry, my brave friend. I'll take care of it. Everything will be all right now. Lorne managed to mumble, Thank you, Senator Palpatine. And then everything faded. Palpatine was just returning to the place where they had been standing earlier, his eyes and his movements suggesting unusual excitement. You have the holocron, Damask said as he approached. Yes, but not from Maul. Damask waited for an explanation. It was dropped into my hand by none other than the information broker Maul had been pursuing and thought dead. Lorne Pavan. The fact that Pavan's right hand had been cleanly and recently amputated told me at once that the two fought in one of the airlocks. This Pavan defeated Maul. Palpatine shook his head but I suspect that Pavan somehow managed to outwit him and take him by surprise. 
Incredible, Damask said, astonished that events could become even more convoluted. Then Pavan must know what the holocron contains. I'm supposed to deliver it to the Jedi, Palpatine said with obvious amusement, and looking around added, perhaps to Yoda or Windu. Pavan! Palpatine squared his shoulders. Pestage and Doriana are escorting him downside, where he'll receive medical attention, maybe even a new hand, and a comfortable hotel suite in which to spend the final day of his life. A reward we should withhold from Maul, but probably won't. Damask glanced at Palpatine. In any event, it wasn't Pavan who handed you the holocron. It was delivered by the dark side. Palpatine thought about it for a moment. And Sifo Dias, will he do it? Even if he decides against it, there may be a way to place the order in his name. But the Force tells me that he will do it. That will make him a potential danger to us. Damask nodded. But it won't matter. We have become invincible.